There's an old saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. If fool me, we can't get fooled again. So there's been some big news with regards to Syria today. The United States has said it will arm the Syrian rebels in their fight against the Assad government. So why is this such big news? Well, in that part of the world, Russia have always backed Assad, as have Iran. And then there's Lebanon's Hezbollah, who have recently been fighting in support of Assad. Then there's the people who support the rebels in the region. That's people like Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Turkey, all allied with the West. And the West has always supported the rebels with non-lethal aid, but this is the first time that they have said they will arm the rebels. So how countries like Russia and Iran and Lebanon respond to this is going to be crucial. Ben Rhodes is the US Deputy National Security Advisor and he said this during a telephone conversation. Uh, first of all, our intelligence community assesses that the Assad regime has used chemical weapons including the nerve agent sarin on a small scale against the opposition multiple times in the last year. He also said it crossed a number of red lines and international norms, but it was way back in April when Obama first started saying that the use of chemical weapons would be to cross a red line in Syria. A red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. Uh, that would change my calculus. At the time, Obama said that the use of a whole bunch of chemical weapons would be to cross the red line, but now it seems just small-scale use is enough. Again, at the same time, Obama said that intelligence assessments would not be enough to justify military intervention, and yet that is exactly what they're basing their decision on now. Take a listen again to Ben Rhodes. Uh, first of all, our intelligence community assesses that the Assad regime has used chemical weapons including the nerve agent sarin on a small scale. And there's a whole bunch of reasons to be skeptical. The White House have released statement after statement saying that chemical weapons have been used and that their intelligence communities have evidence to suggest this, but they've never released that intelligence to be scrutinized by journalists. And they also said this strange comment in their statement. We are working with allies to present a credible evidentiary case to share with the international community and the public. As yet, we haven't seen that evidence, but the United States have already said that they will be arming the rebels and are considering setting up a no-fly zone. And then there's the fact that their intelligence doesn't wash with other governments. The Russian government has seen that evidence and they are not convinced by its authenticity. In fact, one senior lawmaker went as far as to say that the evidence is fabricated. Now, we're not saying that you should trust the Russian government any more than the United States government, but it's interesting to note they have completely differing opinions on this evidence. Then there's the issue of chemical weapons use at the hands of the rebels. In the statement the White House released, they said this, we have no reliable corroborated reporting to indicate that the opposition in Syria has acquired or used chemical weapons. And yet in May, Carla Del Ponte from the UN inquiry into Syria said this. What appear on a um, um, to our investigation that uh, that was uh, used by the opponents, by the rebels. And we have no no indication at all that the government, Syria, uh, the authority of the Syria government have used chemical weapons. The UN investigated an official complaint made by the Syrian government that chemical agents had been used in an attack in Al Bab. It was thought to be chlorine and it was suggested it had been used by the Al Nusra Front. <laughs> France and Britain both say that they have physiological evidence to show that sarin has been used. They say they have found evidence of it in urine samples and blood samples. Britain said they think this sarin can be traced back to Assad, but they can't prove it 100%. So it's a confusing picture, but nonetheless, the United States have said that they will be arming the rebels in their fight against Assad's government. They are also talking about setting up a no-fly zone. Reacting to the announcement in the United States, the Syrian Foreign Ministry had this to say. 
The White House relied on fabricated information in order to hold the Syrian government responsible for using these weapons, despite a series of statements that confirmed that terrorist groups in Syria have chemical weapons. The United States, in resorting to a shameful use of pretexts in order to allow President Obama's decision to arm the Syrian opposition, shows that it has flagrant double standards in the way it deals with terrorism. So David Cameron and William Haig have now both said they back everything the United States have said with regard to the use of chemical weapons inside Syria. But they haven't presented the evidence upon which they are making those assertions. So what do you think? Are we in a boy who cries wolf scenario? In 2003, in the run-up to the Iraq war, Colin Powell famously now delivered his evidence to the United Nations about the weapons of mass destruction inside Iraq. And yet in 2013, no such weapons were ever found in Iraq, so the evidence can't have been particularly strong. Is the same thing happening again with Syria? Or do you think that the evidence for the use of chemical weapons is actually strong and therefore can justify a military intervention? We want to hear your thoughts about this because it is a crucial point. Check out some of the other things we've done about Syria over there. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe and we'll see you guys again next time.